go. Hello, Buccaneers. Today I'm going to be ranking the unmatched characters from 2019. From my least favorite to favorite. Okay. Now, number seven is King Arthur. Okay. King Arthur and Merlin. Okay. So there's a King Arthur miniature and Merlin. My main problem with King Arthur is the draining cards. That's why I don't really enjoy playing King Arthur that much. Or else he's pretty powerful. So, let's see. Which card? Okay, the, my favorite card in here, there's two of them. First, or oh, three. Wait, let me get. My first favorite card is the Holy Grail, which if King Arthur has four or less health, he goes back to eight, which this card is very easy to use on characters with a very, very, like a lot of attacks, like Sinbad when he has a bunch of voyages and he plays it and somehow you get to play this that's when this comes in handy, and it's King Arthur's only healing card, but I enjoy it. Another card is the Excalibur, which I, with the Lady of the Lake, you can get it back. But yeah, a six attack, this is all. I, I just like this card because it can be a nine, and that's basically three larger lives combined if you have nine plus another nine. From the Holy Grail and you get it back. Okay. And now here's my favorite Merlin scheme card. He has a lot of these Merlin schemes, but uh -huh. this one. The last one, you should exp explain why and how it could be a nine. Okay. And then when you say Nurture in Life, some people, there's no big foot there here. Oh, there's, okay. There. But you gotta say who's, because people might not know who's. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'll so, just restart. All right. All right. Okay, so. Next is the Excalibur, it's just this. But when you add this Noble Sacrifice card with the three boost value, you can add it on with your power and it can be a nine. Just like, it's basically three larger than life if you bring this back and then do it again. And larger than life is gonna be from Bigfoot, which I'll show you later. But yeah, this is it. And now my favorite Merlin scheme, um, there's two other ones, but this one's probably my favorite. Choose any space in Merlin's zone. Deal two damage to each opponent fighter in that space and in one adjacent space. If at least one fighter is defeated in this way, draw one card. Which, drawing one card could drain your deck, but it's one of the only cards in this deck that lets you draw cards. And plus two damage is good. So that is King Arthur. My number seven. Okay. okay. Now for number six. My number six is Bruce Lee. Because when I looked at the set, it was only one hero with no sidekick, which I like characters with sidekick and also his melee. But playing him is pretty enjoyable because he has six cards that do have uh, him gain actions and then there's some effect um, before and it's a three attack. So there's six of these cheat kundos. So far I only found three, four, five, six. Okay. And these are probably just my favorite cards in here, cheat kundos. Um, the my favorite Jeet Kune Do is Jeet Kune 
Doe High Strength Leap. It's a three attack, um, but if Bruce Lee or the opposing fighter started this turn in a different space, it's a five instead, which I like. And of course, it gains you an action after combat. So that one's my favorite Jeet Kune Do card in here. Um, my favorite scheming card from here is um, One Inch Punch. It can basically just destroy all the one point sidekicks. And then you can use it on heroes because it says do two damage to an adjacent fighter. If this defeats that fighter, return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. So basically, even though it can jack up your hand, at least you get it back if you defeat a fighter this way, which is very powerful and it's too damage. And of course, just six Jeet Kune Do cards aren't enough. So with Be Like Water, you can, um, after com it's a three defense. But after combat, choose a Jeet Kune Do card in your discard pile and add it back in your hand. Which, I use it mainly, I usually save it until um, the Jeet Kune Do High Straight lead is out there so that I can just keep playing that. Usually, I don't play that card until it's out there unless that's my only defense card. Okay. And he has 14 health, which isn't the best, but his power is one of my favorite powers. It says at the end of your turn, you may move Bruce Lee um, up to one space, which you can just keep backing up, like in, in Jeet Kune Do. You can just keep going back, which I like because basically with it, it works well on um, melee characters, but it also kind of works well on range characters, too. Um, and movie three is good. So that is Bruce Lee, my number six. And he's very easy to clean up. That's also another thing that I like about it. Next is my number five. I don't know why it should be higher. I I'm I don't know why it's number five, but I think it'll get higher up when um when we release the other characters into the ranking. But my number um my number five is Sinbad. He has fifteen health as a hero and six health for the porter. Um so before I show cards, I'm going to talk about the Porter. The Porter is actually a very good sidekick because nobody wants to kill the Porter. So basically, if nobody wants to kill the Porter, he's basically like a free shield for Sinbad. And they just waste their time going around the Porter. So I in my point of view, I see the Porter as one of the better sidekicks. But, okay, now to the cards. Porter only has, but has some bad attacks, but besides the momentous shift. Hey, while I was thinking through these cards, I accidentally found the Bigfoot card. Okay, I'm putting it back. Okay, now we keep digging through it. Okay. So, my favorite card for the Porter in here is actually an any card, but it's a 5 attack. Usually, I do this on the Porter, since nobody's really going to defend with the Porter. So, I just do this 5 attack. <laughs> it's an any card 5 attack, and after combat, you get to draw a card, which is pretty good since this deck doesn't really have any draw cards. A card to accept that, and then I think it's two other, or three other cards. Besides, oh, actually, there's a lot of drawing cards after I think about it. But yeah, it's 
only draw one card, which I like, but there's only one of it, which is the part that sucks. And then there's seven voyages, if sent out in the seven voyages, of course. So there's, uh, there's these seven voyages. And my favorite voyages in here, there's, act there's actually three of my favorite voyages. Did I find all of them? No. But anyway, they're all here. The ones I like. So, one lets you look at your opponent's hand. One lets you move back two spaces. One of them lets you draw one card. Um, one of them lets you your opponent discard one random card. And here's the ones that I like. My favorite is... The village home, which of course it's only a two attack, but you can add to it for as many voyage cards as you add, have in your deck. But um, after combat, after combat, um, you get all the voyages car voyage cards from your discard pile and get it back into your hand. For me, this is very important for the healing voyage cards because. There's only one healing void card, and that's the only healing card in Sinbad's deck. But I like how you can get all the void cards back. So that is one of my favorite void cards. My other favorite is a void to the city of the man-eating apes. Of course, you can add to it. And then after combat, deal two damage to the opposing fighter. So the opposing fighter doesn't have to be adjacent. The only way that the opposing fighter can deal with it is if they cancel the effects. So usually I like to play this as soon as I can, but I always, uh, I'm always scared that the opposing fighter has a thing in their hand. So. Yeah, that's another favorite, and the only healing card is also my favorite. Voyage to the island of the vo voyage to the island that was a whale. Um, and after combat, Simba Simbad recovers two health, and he can recover four if he uses Village Home. But yeah, sometimes it could be fainted, or or else I if that's a good card. And that is Sinbad. The, I, in my opinion, Sinbad's pretty good, but I think I do like Alice better. And we'll get to Alice soon. And that is Sinbad, my number five, I think. Yeah, five? Yeah. Okay, my number four is Medusa. I, I totally forgot about Medusa besides Alice. So yeah, Medusa, which has 16 health, and the three harpies, which are pretty good. They could do some attacks. Medusa can move three, which I like, and she's a ranged character, one of the only ranged characters in 2019. And the harpies are melee, but there's three of them, and they're one point each. And at the start of the turn, you may deal one damage to an opposing fire and Medusa, so, which is nice on melee characters. It's just sometimes you have to be careful if they have move uh, uh, cards that after they attack, they get a move away out of your zone, or and also you need to make sure that all the adjacent spaces adjacent to you are in the zone that you're on, which I always have problems getting, but I, I try to remember to do that, okay? And Medusa and the Harpies are good at making your opponent discard cards. Okay, my favorite Medusa card in here is very, it's, 
Uh, there's a bunch of them, okay? I'll show three of them. I like all three. Well, I like all four, but yeah, I'll just show all of them. And the other one. So, my favorite Medusa cards are Second Shot, which is a three tack. Um, three tack, not two like Muldoon. So, I like it three tack, but then during combat, you can boost it. So, I like to boost it with either the Gaze of Stone with a four boost or a Momentary Glance with also a four boost. That can be a seven. So, and those cards that I boost with are you are also my favorites, but I have to boost with it to make it seven, which it's worth it since for the Gaze of Stone, there's three of them. And now I'm getting to the Gaze of Stone, the most powerful card in Medusa's deck, but very rare to use. It's a two attack. There's three of them, which I like, but if you want the combat, deal eight damage to the opposing fighter. This is probably gonna make it the opposing fighter dead. So have a defense card in your hand for Medusa. Or else if you only have one, run away. And I I usually use it on people that have very little amount of cards, like one or two one or zero, but uh usually i do it on zero but sometimes like i use it when a, people have a bunch since i have a feeling that they have no defense cards so that's the case of stone next is hiss and slither for defense for medusa which is very good besides um some five defense cards and stuff um, after combat, your opponent discards one card. It's an, it, and there's three of them, which I like. So there's already three defense cards that you, you discard with, which I like. And a momentary glance. Deal two damage to any one fighter in Medusa's zone. This one's just two damage if you're in Medusa's zone. <laughs> which, I just like it. It's two automatic damage. In Medusa's zone. Usually I do that on heroes. I do not know anybody that does it on sidekicks. But I usually do it on heroes. I never really do it on sidekicks. And now, the harpies. There's two... There's harpy cards that I like. I think these are the only harpy card only. The Hounds of Mighty Zeus... It's a four versatile, but usually I do it for attack since I just, it's a four attack, which is good for a sidekick. Um, after combat, move each harpy up to three spaces, which is good because after you attack, you can move away. That way they won't attack it. Um, and then next is the Clutching Claws. It's a three versatile, but again, I usually do it on attacks if I could. It's only a three, but it's better than a one or a two. After combat, your opponent discards one card. <laughs> and as I said, Medusa and them are good at discarding cards for the Puffin Fighter, which I like because that's how Medusa gets to use the Gaze of Stone. So, they make it possible for the Gaze of Stone. And that is Medusa, my number four. Okay, now we're at number three. Bigfoot. And the Jackalope. The Jackalope is one of my favorite sidekicks, I gotta say. I like I like most sidekicks, including the Porter. <laughs> I still don't know why, but he's good <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, Bigfoot, 16 health, and the Jackalope has 6. My favorite card for Bigfoot is... 
this is a six. A six attack with nothing. This is the larger than life that I'm talking about. And it has three of them. Which is just big. At, for some reason, I like this better than King Arthur's six with a boost. Even though it's the exact same damage if they don't do it. Yeah, but somehow, oh, I don't know why Bigfoot has a big six, not a five, but it works. Okay. Another card. Okay, now for the jackalope. Bigfoot that larger than life is my favorite card. For the jackalope, there's a couple. Jackalope horns. Move jackalope up to five spaces. You may move your uh, spaces contain opposing fire. Steal two damage to any one fire adjacent to the jackalope. Which is just nice. Two damage and there's three of them. And it's a scheme and jackalope gets to move that way. You probably get it. Use the momentous shift, which a three that becomes a five, which is in most decks. But I like to use it after I do the jackalope horns usually. Or, or another card that I like. There it appears in Angel and Raptor's decks too. It's called Disengage. Choose an empty space in this fighter's zone. Place that fighter in that space. It's just nice. It's just a four attack and then you get to go away. At Bigfoot, I gotta say, it's very good at going away and moving through opposing fighters. He just gets to move out of trouble. And he also has crashed through the trees. Is a steam. Move Bigfoot up to five spaces. You may move Bigfoot through spaces contain opposing fighters. And there's a bunch of these. There's also... Hoax, which is a four versatile. Usually I use it for defense. There's three of them. After combat, move your fire up to five spaces. You mean with their spaces contain clones of fighters. So that is what I think they were trying to do for Bigfoot. Of course, there's a three things, but there's also it's just your imagination, which is a three defense. Uh, any card, but immediately cancel all effects on your opponent's card. And I know why they make so many cancel effects at Bigfoot stuff. It's because for Robin Hood, all those all those highway robberies, they need Bigfoot to have a bunch of them to deal with Robin Hood. So that's why Bigfoot has so many cancel effects. If you want to know that, but I I figure that they needed a bunch of them. And that is Bigfoot and the Jackalope, my number three. Yeah, number three. Okay. Now for my number two, Alice. Uh, my favorite character from Battle of the Legends is Alice. I like the theme of the big and small, and this 13 health character is amazing because big you get it at plus two which is a very good and small is a plus, mine, a plus one for defense if you are using for defense then you're on that size and of course the jabberwock a drag my favorite card from this alice deck is looking glass it's a two defense, but if you're small, of course, it's a three. After combat, choose two different effects. I like how you can choose between these three. Draw two cards. Alice recovers three health or place Alice in any other space. I like this card because either you get to draw cards because this is a, a one out of two cards that you get drawn Alice's deck. And I, I usually, I always pick the Alice Recovers 3 health. Because usually, you only get to recover like one or two at a time. Except for a little red stack. You get to recover four at a time. But three is already good. And there's two of them. 
and it's a defense card. Usually I pick Alice Recovers 3 and draw 2 cards, but sometimes I like to get away from trouble, of course. So this one's a great thing, but I do have trouble when it comes to blind boosting. Somehow, it always comes when I blind boost, which I don't like because there's other cards with four boost values. But other than that, I like this card. Okay, another card that I like, well, I'll go to the Jabberwock now. There's two Jabberwock cards, Claws That Catch and Jaws That Bite. Uh, I gotta say, between these, I like Jaws That Bite better. But both are good. They're both good attacks. But it's a four attack for the Jabberwock only. And after combat, I deal two damage to any one fire adjacent to the Jabberwock. Sometimes that can be issues. Because if Alice is right next to the Jabberwock and he's fighting us, and the opposing fighter gets to move for their after combat, then do two damage to any one fighter adjacent to the Jabberwock. It does not it does not say opposing fighter, so you have to deal two damage to Alice. So when you play this card, I would say to make sure that Alice is not next to the Jabberwock. Or else she has a big chance of getting hurt. Because there's a lot of cards that let people run away. And there's also Claws That Catch. If the opposing fighter is a hero, this card's value is 5 instead. I don't know why I like Jaws That Bite better. It's just, this one is basically to me like a momentous shift. But in a Jabberwock way that Alice can't use it. So, I just have trouble with that. Or else that card is pretty good. And there's also um, Maxim Foe, which is um, three versatile, but if your big is a five, and during combat, discard the top card of your deck and add its boost value to this card's value. So that can be a nine if you have a four boost value. But again, that's the card that I have trouble because I always somehow discard my healing looking glass card, which I don't like, but I don't like how I have to discard it. And an unusual thing that I observed a few months ago is that Alice only has two skirmish cards. And I know why, because if you are small, it's a five defense but if you're big it's a six attack and also i noticed that there is only two momentum shifts instead of three and of course it's from the big alice not the small because that's only a four but yeah it's from big alice which i i don't like how it's only two but they come in handy and that is Alice, my number two. Okay, now number one. My number one is... Robin Hood. Robin Hood and... The... Where's the last one? And the Four Outlaws is a great art. He only has 13 health, and all the characters with 13 health get a heal, except Robin Hood. He's the character with the least amount of health, including healing. He cannot even heal. But he can fight amazingly. He can fight Sinbad, he can fight Alice, and he can destroy. I've been Robin Hood and destroyed Medusa and Bigfoot and many other characters that I don't remember. Robin Hood's amazing. Okay, my favorite Robin Hood card from here is... And the 
reason why Robin Hood's amazing is because his only his highest defense card is only a three, which even with Dracula, his highest is a three, but you get a bounce back card. But Robin Hood, his highest is only a three. Luckily, he has faint and he has a five attack. This is all a hunter's eye, just five attack. That's my favorite Robin. Hood. I like characters with straight numbers the best, like just, just the attack back. Um, that's my favorite Robin Hood card. My favorite outlaw card is Highway Robbery. There's four of them, which is the reason I like it. And immediately cast all effects on your opponent's card in order to value, which meaning is that basically only a fate can cancel them, which I like. But I really think it's too overpowering. I wish that there's a two sides of the outlaws, one with just an outlaw and one with uh, X and the outlaw token. The reason is because there's four of them, so I think they meant to do one for each outlaw, but I, I wish it was like that, so it's only one can be for each outlaw. Which, I think that's how it's supposed to, I think that's how it could be a bit less powerful. Because then, if you want outlaws to surround you, and there's only one outlaw attacking with all these highway robberies, it would be way too powerful. And, of course, I like to trick people thinking that I'm playing a highway robbery. So, of course... I play Ambush. Um, it's a two any card, but usually I use them for outlaws. During combat, your opponent discards a random card and add its boost value to this card value. This is a great card to get rid of cards, but the highest it can be is a six, which is actually very great after I think about it. But only a few, only a few people besides Robin Hood have a five. But I four boost that. I wonder if one day they will have five boost value. Probably not, but I don't think. I I think it might happen. I don't know. But yeah. And yeah, there's absolutely zero healing cards in this whole deck. There's a lot of drawing cards, which I don't like because I find myself running out of cards too much. But I know they just played it correctly. And plus, Rob Hood's a ranged character, which is the reason why I mainly like it. Um, or, or else I think that's it for um, Robin Hood. Of course, you can bring back the Outlaws and Robin Hood of... The reason why there's so many outlaws is because then usually I just uh, do a whole army of outlaws surrounding Robin Hood so that people will waste time for uh, doing these outlaw stuff. But, or else I think that's Robin Hood, my number one from 2019. Oh. And that is my breaking for the seven characters from the three sets. If these unmatched sets look fun to you, you can purchase these at the link of the description. And I'll be making another video on the rankings for the 2020 characters added into these. And, um, bye bye. Well, okay, I won't vlog. This is my Okay.